Lemon Farm Heritage Days. We're here in John Wall's kitchen in Cumming, Georgia, for a little story we're going to call Tractor Magneto 101. Take it away, John. It's all you. <laughs> uh, yeah, like Rick said, we're here in my kitchen because it's hot outside, and we've uh, decided we're going to try to give some a real high level, uh, maybe a tips and tricks on the probably one of the most overlooked or at least uh, or at best the least understood part of a tractor for a lot of people because in one of these little boxes is your entire ignition with the exception of the spark plugs and not a lot of people anymore know how they work and honestly they're not that hard to once you get your head around what's going on it's not that hard because basically everything inside of these, it doesn't matter if you've got a John Deere like what this came off of or an International Harvester, a, uh, uh, Alice Chalmers case, whatever. They all work basically the same way. And uh, it's just the way that the individual companies put them together. So what we're going to do today, this actually, this is a, a Wyco C. This came off of uh, John Deere A, 1940. It actually, I own it. Um, it's been sitting for about 40 years, and 40 years, it's been sitting about 15 years without being crunked. So we're going to open it and see what we got and see if we can actually get it to spark this uh, afternoon. Because usually when you let them sit, you're, it will, uh, things will happen inside there that, you know, make it not want to work. And I will show you this at the beginning because I just noticed it. This hole, if anybody ever comes up with a magneto that has a hole on it, that's not from the factory. At some point, the coil has gone bad in this magneto, so somebody drilled a hole in it and used a car coil to uh, do it with. That was the one way that they fixed them back in the day. It was quick, it was easy, it was cheap, so that's what happened. So what we'll do, we'll get right to this, and I'll show you what we have. But before, actually, well, while I'm taking the cover off, I'll tell you, um, magnetos are nothing more than a simple... Uh, it's almost, it's the same principle as a, an electric motor. And what happens, it's called the Faraday law. And the Faraday law basically says, if you have a magnet that's moving next to a piece of wire, you will actually generate electrical current. And that's all there is to it. And basically well, that's what happens inside this box. And it, even when it says have a, a magnet moving, you can actually move the wire as well because if you look on some old magnetos, I mean like brass era, 1915, 1905, uh, that kind of thing, the actual magnet did move, but the uh, they moved the wire, which was inside the armature. And I'll show you what, what I'm talking about when I say armature. If you know anything or have ever looked inside one of these, there are five pieces basically that are in every magneto, uh, when I say ma every magneto, a modern magneto. And even though this is 70 years old, this is considered a modern because it has um, permanent magnets and it weighs about 10 pounds. <laughs> the old ones could probably weigh up about 15, 20 pounds. The magnets weren't permanent and there was a lot of upkeep. But when you have a modern magneto, you have an armature, you got a, point, a set of points, a condenser, a coil, and um, some way to distribute the power. So if you like this one, this is a two-cylinder. If you got an International Harvester or Alice Chalmers, there will be four. And all it is is they'll, be, they'll add gears to uh, divide the, the, uh, the, uh, when, when the, the rotation of the, of the uh, armature. The armature is the part that goes around. So if you... When you got it on the tractor and you got a piece going around, it's got the magnets on it, and I'll show you that in a minute. On these magnetos, you have to take the coil wire off because the points are made in the cap, and uh, are actually not made in the cap; they're just sitting there. But I will tell you, when you get one, let's say you've got a tractor that you go out there, you get ready to crank it, you got no spark, and you've done everything you know to do, and it still doesn't spark. So you go, all right, my magneto, something wrong with my magneto. Chances are, if you've not had a catastrophic failure, the only thing that's wrong with your magneto is it's dirty. And I'll show you where you need to look and what you need to do 
uh, just to get by that. So we've got the cap off now. And like I was talking about, we've got the five parts here where we can see them. Here's your coil. And inside this coil, you have actually two separate coils. And you have a primary winded and a secondary winded. And the primary basically gets the electrical charge in there, gets it started up. The secondary is the one that makes the high voltage. And then this is your armature. And these are your magnets. You have a magnet at the bottom and a magnet at the top. If you see, what they've done is basically they've welded them onto the side of the armature. So as this turns, the magnets go around. And when the magnets get to the side like that, the, the uh, magnetism comes in, comes up these sides, goes through the iron core, and it generates an electrical uh, or magnetic field right here. And when the, as this moves, when it breaks, when, when this comes around right there, there's no longer any magnetism going up the sides. So now when that comes down, that actually lets this thing start producing a, a, uh, an electrical charge. So what you got, you have a magnetic circuit that goes around like this. And as this turns with the rotation of the engine, you, they come and go. And that's basically what you're doing is you're moving the magnet next to the wire. And that's what causes electricity to be formed. So we will uh, lay this aside for now and I'll show you what I got for the rest of it. This is the rest of it. You have the condenser. These are your breaker points. The armature comes through the hole right here. And as it goes around, it opens and closes. And as this breaks, when, when, you, get a, when you get a magnetic charge or a, a, an electrical field set up in here, when the points break, the magnetism that's in the coil, it actually starts to decay and as it decays it falls down and basically what it's doing if you think about if you think about like a balloon that's full of air and then when you open the end if it, it starts to collapse like that as the field collapses with the points open now this all happens in a split second but as the the field collapses the secondary coil which is a whole lot more wire and it's very 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 fine starts picking that up and as it picks it up it sends it into the condenser and the condenser is basically all it does is hold all of that electricity so it can all go out of here at one time it goes through the wire and out to the spark plug so this is where when it comes out of the condenser it comes up and goes out to the spark plug and what you've got is this just holds it back so if again if you think about having a hose like a water hose with your thumb over the end and it's just barely running if you hold your thumb there long enough it'll build up pressure and when you let it go it all comes out at once that is what a condenser does. It just condenses all the electricity that's floating around in here into one big charge because it has to have enough and it has to have it quickly so it'll jump the air gap on your spark plug. So that's how they work, basically. It's just, it's just opening and closing, making and breaking the uh, magnetic field. But if you're looking at this, you're going, I'm not thinking about that. I need to know why my tractor won't run. Probably what you need to do first is just look at it and make sure there's nothing that's out of, that doesn't look abnormal. If it looks like everything's in place and it's all tight, there's nothing wiggling around, what you probably need to do first is check the gap on your points. Depending on which magneto you have, it's either between, you need to set the gap of the points between 15 thousandths and probably 22 thousandths. You can set it pretty much anywhere in there. It'll run well. If you have a book on these, um, you know, you, they'll tell you exactly where it is. But um, even on Wyco Magnetos, you can't really see it on this one. But in this corner, it says it'll tell you what to set it. This, you're supposed to set this one to 15 thousandths when it's gapped open. And first thing you need to do is make sure the gap works. If you've got the gap, that's probably good. You're, what you need to do, though, is take the points out. Because what's happened, more, like, more than likely, is in this gap, the points have corroded. Because what happens is moisture gets in there. It sits there like this one been sitting there 15 years. 
you need to take that out and clean them. You can, you can stick a piece of sandpaper in there like that and work it back and forth and do a passable job of getting that clean. But I'll show you why I tell you you need to take them out because uh, you, need to, you need to look at more than just the gap. So what you do on this one is you just take the screw out and I'll take the points out here and um, show you what I'm talking about. And on white coats, and this is just Wycos. It's not Fairbanks Morse. It's not International Harvester. But on Wycos, you'll see that I took the, the screw out here. That screw is actually what holds the, this, this set of breakers in. Um, it also, <coughs> when you take it out, there's a bushing and a spacer. And the spacer looks like a washer. And due to hot, uh, make the make the mistake and leave the spacer and all that that's not in there. All right, so here's half of the breakers. Here's the bushing that's in there. See, they just made the hole big. And what that's for, the, the WICO people decided that this is expendable and this is not. If you get a new set of points, you do not get a bushing. And you gotta, if you lose this, it won't work because this hole's too big. So do not lose this little bushing or throw it away. Keep that. Lay your points aside because you're not done yet. This is what I'm talking about. This, for all intents and purposes, let me get it out and then I'll move my fingers. For all intents and purposes, this, if I can get it out, there we go. This is a shim that they put behind the points because the points itself, and I can't get it out as I'm sitting here, but I'll get it out. We'll uh, we can come back. There's another way you can do it. We'll take the other half of the breaker out, and you'll I'll have it. But that that looks like a washer, and you'll see when I get it out, I'll show it to you. The um, the hole's bigger in this than it is in the washer, and what that's for is it makes the point the breaker faces line up because it'll it'll go together if you don't have the the, the shim but your points won't be aligned and you will not get as good a service out of your magneto because you're not getting the full all right so here it is there's the shim right there that sits on here and then the bushing goes down in there like that and then the, the points sit up on top and what happens is, when you get all this together, it makes the two ends of the breaker line up. If you don't have that, it'll be half off, or some portion of that, half off. And you don't want that. You've got to have them square. And when I'm saying square, what I'm talking about is they line up one right on top of the other. Also, square means this face needs to be flat. So when you're getting ready to shine these points up, you need to get something. And I just happen to have a vise here. And I fool with a lot of magnetos. So I have a vise that I like to use. This is actually not it. I, <laughs> I don't know where the one I like to use is. I think someone's borrowed it from me. But what we're doing is you want to get a piece of fine sandpaper or emery cloth. Take your points. And if you look at them very closely, and we'll have a close-up and you can see it, but there are little divots that have worn out on this and there's some corrosion on it. And corrosion is not like battery acid corrosion. It's just a, it's like a skin over it. And you'll see that it's just not shiny. So what you want to do is you want to put this on a flat surface, like the anvil portion of a, of a set of, of a, of a vise and just run it along the edge. And the reason I use the anvil portion is because that's flat. And if you hold that on there with your fine sandpaper, and you don't have to bear down because what you want to do is basically polish it. So if you start polishing, you'll see that gray that's on my sandpaper now, that is the, the corrosion that's coming off. Because these points, if they're old, and most of them are, they're made out of tungsten, and tungsten is very hard. It takes a lot to get them uh, beat up. And the little divots that are in this, 
I'm looking at it now to see where I am because you want to do it a while and then check it. And do it a while and check it because you want to make sure that it's flat, first of all. And then you want to get it as smooth as you can. And the little divots come from the condenser leaking. Sometimes you'll get a magneto and when you look at the points, you will see that there's a black, looks like soot in between them. That tells you right then what you need to do. First thing is go to the store and buy yourself a condenser because the condenser is leaking. And when they leak, they let electricity come across the points. And what happens is when the points open, it arcs in the gap. And you do not want that to arc in the gap. And what it's doing is actually burning part of the points out. And so when, it, when you find like a sooty kind of black dot that's in there, you need to get a, you need to get a uh, set of points. I mean, well, you look at your points, make sure they're not, you know, make sure you got enough that it will stay. But you need to make sure that you get a condenser because your condenser is bad and you will never get it right if you don't have one that works all the time. And it's cheap insurance. I will tell you any time that I make or fix one for somebody or build one up for myself, they get a condenser. The rest of it may be, may be okay, but uh, even if the condenser is okay, I don't know how long it's been in there. Condensers, depending on who you talk to, some people say they do, some people say they don't have a shelf life. I tend to believe that they do, because if you think the way a condenser is made, basically what it is, is a piece of conductive material, it's like tinfoil, it's, it's sandwiched between, you got a piece of tin foil, you got a piece of insulation kind of paper, so it's basically just paper, or actually now they're using some kind of uh, synthetic material, but it's two pieces like that and it's rolled up. So you get the tin foil is between it and what happens is when the charge comes in, it can't go anywhere until it grounds. And so uh, these are getting better, we're, we're getting there. And uh, so that's the way they work. So, it, and like I said, it's cheap insurance. Get a condenser, put it in there for a few dollars. It's worth it not to have that headache of having to take it apart again and again and again. All right, so you can't really see it, but now they're very, very shiny. There's not any kind of con corrosion on them. So we'll, uh, we'll lay that one aside, get the other half, which is this one right there. It is same thing. Just uh, find yourself a fresh piece of paper, start running it. Because what you're doing as you're polishing them, you're also flattening it out because you're working it on this surface. If you just stick the, the, the uh, paper in there, you can get the corrosion off, but you're not really flattening them. And corrosion is good, you know, get the corrosion off, that's what you want. But the flattening is what keeps them right because what happens over time is they actually will dish out because as these things are opening and closing like that thousands and thousands of times a minute, uh, it actually dishes them. And if it's, if again, if you've got a condenser that's going bad, it's burning a dish in there and you want to get the dish off because what you'll find is the outside will be taller than the middle. So this one is, that one's good. So there you go. So there's that. Now we've got our points. Basically ready to go back. We'll put all our little points pieces together so we can find them. Um, we will get rid of this. Now we're back over to, uh, we want to take out our condenser. The condenser, like I said, you need to make sure this thing is in good operating condition. And again, if, you, if you're just out in the field and you don't have one for whatever reason, that's you can you might can make it work there are ways to test them uh sometime if if you are where i am i'll show you how to do it um <laughs> it involves if you don't really know how to do it you'll get yourself shocked it won't kill you it'll get your attention but it won't kill you um unless perhaps if you have a pacemaker it's a little hard on pacemakers so if you got a pacemaker probably not your thing you want to do but on these these are a little different than a lot of other magnetos. A lot of other magnetos do not have the uh, point spring bracket attached to it. A lot of them, it just is this part, and it'll have a little holder that catches it. So that's fine. 
what you want to do when you get your new one, even though it's new. Because I've had people argue with me, oh, it's new and we got, I, I just put it in, it won't work. The outside of the case, this is the metal that lets it ground. See, because this, oops, this has all the electricity in it. It's containing it inside here. So this is a circuit. If you had this charged up and you touch this to this right here, you would get a spark there if it was loaded up. You don't, if you don't have a good connection between this and whatever you're grounding to, you won't get a good, you won't get a good spark. It'll be weak if you get one at all. So what you want to do is you want to make sure however this attaches to the machine, to the, to the magneto itself, you want to make sure that's clean. So when you're looking at this one, because it's soldered on, you don't really don't have to worry about this part. What you have to worry about is this part. And if you see how this has been anodized with some anti-fouling stuff, this one has been sanded off at some point. So they've had some corrosion in here and they've cleaned it. That's all good. That's what you're supposed to do. But what you got to do from now on, because it doesn't have the gold on there anymore, you got to clean that every time. So again, what you do, you get your paper. And this one is not so critical. It doesn't have to necessarily be flat. But you just clean it up. See, there's some corrosion that came off. You clean that up. Because what you're doing is you're cleaning all the mating surfaces. So if we clean this side, we need to clean this side. You can do this with sandpaper. I will tell you, Dremel tools are a wonderful thing for magnetos. So what I do with this is I just turn it on, run it about half. And while I'm in here, remember that the, your condenser your condenser fastens here. Let me cut that off so you can hear. Your condenser fastens here. Your points fasten down here. This is aluminum. Because you're trying to fa uh, fasten steel to aluminum, you have two dissimilar metals. You will actually induce, and I can't, as I sit here, I can't remember the fancy term for it. Uh, but basically what you're doing, it's going to corrode because... The two metals are different. They don't really like each other. So you'll get a little bit of con corrosion in there. So while you're in here doing this, make sure you clean off where you're gonna have your points go back. So we'll do that too right quick. And what you do, you just shine it up. Because when it's shiny, you're working with fresh metal. So there you go. See how it's now it's all shiny? Now we're ready to go back, but before we do that, while we have this out in the light, we need to look. And the can looks okay. The insulated screw holder for the all the hot wires from the from the entire thing, they all come together here. This is where you, where where the power terminates to go to the spark plug. Um, that looks okay. It's not that has any, it doesn't have any cracks in it. But what we do find, I don't know if you can see it. But what we do find is there's a shiny place right here. That wire, the insulation on the wire has broken over the 20 years or whatever this has been in there. That has broken. So now we have a piece of bare wire in there. And that, that might work, but I will tell you that that will let you down at the absolute wrong time. So this needs to be replaced. I actually have a bunch of these because it's sort of a hobby. I keep a, a pile of parts. And uh, so I got a brand new one. So here's what you get when you get a brand new one. Here's the old one. Here's the new one. You see, it's basically the same thing. This pigtail is a little longer, which is not a problem. Uh, you can always, if they ever get too long. And here's a, here's a pro tip for you. If you're working on like a Fairbanks Morse and you need a condenser, you do not have to buy, if you don't want to, you can. Um, you do not have to buy a condenser that is labeled with part number for Fairbanks, Morris, whatever. You can actually get one from about a 76-ish model uh, General Motors car. The difference in them is the pigtail is a little longer or a little shorter. If yours is too long, just tie a knot in it. That's all you got to do, just make it shorter. Um, it's a lot usually they're cheaper they charge you a premium for magneto parts because they don't think people know that they're the same but basically they are 
So remember what I told you. When you get ready to put these on, you're going to have to clean it. Because this, this is new. Absolutely it's new. But who knows what's on it from the factory. And also, you need to clean this end. Because it's the same way. You got to get. We have to get a good connection here. So what we're doing, we're going to clean this. You don't have to clean it a lot. Just as the painters say, just give it some tooth. What you're doing is just get see right there. You're just getting the getting the oxidation basically off of that. Do this one. And do both sides of this one, not just the bottom. You want to do both sides of it because you're going to stack wires. On these, you have you have the coil wire, the condenser wire, and the spring. They use the spring actually as a wire on the points on this one. You'll see it in a minute and I'll show you. So what we've got now, we've got a clean condenser. We've got points that are, are uh, squared and polished. This is the end that I'm telling they were using. This is the spring. This wire, this wire, and that wire on the on the box all fit together. So you want to have them all clean where when they're together, they have a good contact. All of them talk to each other. So we're going to lay that aside. We're going to bring this over here. Clean this little end. Because this is the one that comes from the coil. Like I said, do you remember when I was at the beginning when I told you that the end when the, when the when the magnet goes around the fields collapse it sends electricity through the secondary coil down to the condenser this is how it gets to the condenser it comes down this wire crosses here goes in there and it sits in there until the points actually come back together and then it sends it out to the spark plug so all right so we got them all now cleaned up we're going to look down in uh, there just to make sure there's nothing loose. This, if you see that move a little, that's not critical. The uh, What that is is where, the, where they make the hole for the, the iron core that goes through that collects the magnetism, that lets, the, lets it go through the... Because this piece here, that's the iron core that goes through. And that's what carries the magnetism through the coil so the coil can pick up the electricity off of it. That's, that's okay. What we, some people get a little weird about that and want to have that all tight. It's not that big a deal. If you want it to, all you have to do is take the, take the uh, clips off here, slide it out, take a piece of cereal box or a cracker box, something that's very thin cardboard, cut you a piece in, slide it in there, put it all back together, it'll be tight. But it... it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. Some of the iron cores actually have a spring on them that takes that slack out, but it's not critical. So at this point, we're ready to put it back together. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our, our gasket on there. If you don't have a gasket, make yourself one. If you don't want to make it out of paper and you're pretty confident in what you've got going on here, you can actually put gasket sealant. Just put a little. I hesitate to say that because you'll see people gooping them and then stick the thing on there and can't figure out why it doesn't work. It's because you filled up the magneto with, with uh, silicone. Best to put it on your finger and just wipe a little bead on, or not even a bead, just wipe a little on there and then put the cap back on. That's, that's, if you can wipe it on there and see it, that's plenty. You don't want it to stand up. If it squirts out the side when you put the cap back on, you got too much on there. So what we're doing is we're putting it back on here so we can get the coil wire because remember I said this is made to get it. So we're putting the cap back on to get the coil wire in where we can hook it up when we get the points in. So what you do on these, now it's very critical, these caps are not plastic. They're made out of Bakelite and Bakelite is like the first kind of plastic that they came out with. They actually developed it during World War II. Um, you want to be very careful with these because they are brittle. If you just get on these and start cranking down the screws, you will break the cap. You can count on it. And in today's market, this cap is about $80. And if you can save your cap, you need to save the cap. So what you do is, like everything else when you're working on machinery, you just get them started. 
And you don't tighten any of them down until you get them all started. So we want to get them started. And I got, there we go. One good thing too about Wyco, they capture their screws. So on the caps, they don't, uh, they don't fall out usually unless they're worn. So go ahead and snug them up and do it sort of in a cross pattern. So go here, we cross over, just make an X. Just keep easing them up there. You don't want to, you don't want to put a torque on them there. You just want to snug them up. Because all you're really wanting to do is engage that gasket that we put on with between the between the cap and the uh, magneto housing. So just keep tightening them up till you get them pretty snug, and then leave it alone. So there we go. Now we got the cap on. We got our wire down we got to put our points in and our condenser so what you want to do first start with on this one anyway start with uh the bottom one and what we want to do is this is the one that you adjust when you're setting your gap for 15 thousandths you want to put this one on and one of the things that i did not show you earlier i hope you can see it that little screw right there is what you adjust it with. And that screw is actually, if you looked at the screw itself, the head is offset. And what happens is when you turn it, it'll move the points in and out. So it's just a little bit finer way to, to adjust them. And so when you're putting it back on, you have to be mindful, and I'll show you when I get it together. You have to be mindful of where that screw is you don't want to just push it down on there and beat it up because that screw has to help you get it together so i'm gonna put it in here and wallow it around and then i'll show it to you when i get it on there but remember on this this is the one where we have to put the have to put this both the shim and the bushing and so we want to get all this stuff working together it's a little fiddly but once we get it once we get it in there you'll see what i'm talking about But again, as you as you work on these things, don't be scared of it. There's really, unless you're just mean to it and just heavy handed, you won't hurt it taking it apart. What you, If you don't know that you can get it back together in the same way, as you take screws out, before you take screws out, take pictures with your phone. That's the best thing they ever invented was the, was the uh, camera and a phone for these kind of, this kind of stuff because that makes it uh, makes it a whole lot easier. So what I've done now, remember, there's the shim, so the points will line up. It's on there. Here's the bushing. It goes down on there. So see, it's sitting there now. Now we got it made it up for this hole here. But before we put this on, we have to put the condenser on because remember, all of these fasten on to that hole. So we got to get all our wires fastened on and that requires this to be on there. So what we're going to do, we got to turn it around a little. This has two little screws that hold it on. It's these two screws. If you do not have one of these tools, let me just say, go to the store and buy yourself one. This is a screw starter. Uh, and it is exactly that. It's made to, to start screws in a hole because in this, there's no way really to get in there because there's no way to get your fingers in there. That's what this is for. This is a KD part number 2282 or 2262, one or the other, I can't see it. But um, what it does, this little end has a set of ears and then there's one that's crossways and it's spring loaded. So when you turn this, it lines all of them up. You take your screw, your screw that you want to load Put it in the slot, turn it, and it holds it. And all it's for is to get your screws started in the holes that you can't reach in there with your fingers. See, and it snaps off once it gets a little torque on it. That one started. So you just, again, you just twist it up. Put it in there. 
Oops, I missed it. Put it in there. It holds it. Start your screw in the hole. And you don't want to see there. I just I just uh, snapped it and turned it loose. So got to do it one more time. Third time's the charm. And that's a magnet too, by the way. If you uh, can't get it out, you can fish it out with that magnet. You just put it on. Snap it on. Dark screw. It snaps loose. Now see it's in there. It started. This is the screw that I started. This one and that one. So what we want to do is just go ahead and tighten those down because you need this thing sitting there pretty tight. Tighten that down because we've got it all clean. It's making good contact with the point plate, which is this piece. So now we got this wire, we got this wire, and we need this. This is the other half of our point. Now remember, this is the armature that opens and closes it. And this hole is what goes over the bushes. So um, actually, if you were going to set this up to run it for good, and I'll take this back apart, you would want to put either just a little light grease on there or some oil, but not much. I mean, all you want is just enough to sort of coat the inside of that. So what I'm doing, see, I've, that spring comes around, and you got to sort of adjust it because the breaker points have to run against the lobe on the armature. So now it's sitting in there. See, everybody's happy. It's in there. It's on there. Now you're going to stack your wires and get your spring. So again, we got our spring, or I mean our screw. We're going to set this up. Get it on there. Load it up. So now our spring's ready to go. Here's a little tip for you, too. The spring wants to go back out. So if you'll take your screwdriver, since you've got your spring or your screw on the other one, and just sort of line the hole up with your screwdriver you can start it a whole lot easier and you got your other hand and also if if uh, if I were if I had the vise up here you can screw this thing down in a vise and it's like having another set of hands so I'll get this started so there it is we've got see well there's the spring in there holes captured you want to take, because I forgot it, those of you that are sharp-eyed, put it in the comments, make the algorithm go up. John forgot two wires on this, so we've got to take the screw back out. So what we got to do is we got to put these in there. Because again, you remember, we got to have all our power coming to terminate on this uh, into the condenser. And this one is for when the... <clears throat> when the... Uh, when the electricity breaks in the points, that's what lets it ground. And that's what we need to make sure that we're doing. We're getting all that in the right spot. So again, it's a little fiddly and I we'll get some different close-ups where you can see what I'm doing here. But uh, basically what I'm doing is just putting the screw, getting those three wires together, putting the screw on there. Tightening it up because this is in that little nylon block. So this has some inherent drag on the screw. If it's loose, you're going to probably want to get another block, which you can take the one out of the old one, or you can even uh, take a little heat shrink or something like that, some kind of plastic, and uh, and sort of fill the hole in and what you want to do what I'm doing right here all the little metal tabs you don't want them to be touching anything except for that for that right there if you've got them against the armature or against the outside of the condenser or even sometimes the way they're built they'll be on something else your magneto won't work Fairbanks Morse for those of you that are working on Alice Chalmers um, that actually terminates next to the wall over here because they have a they have a kill wire screw 
I will tell you that if you do not put a piece of tape on that when you get there, just take a piece of black electrical tape, cover the edge of that between the between the um, spring and the outside of the case. You'll be opening it again just shortly because what happens when you put the cap on it, if you don't have some kind of insulator between that, it will actually arc the spark off of that and it'll ground itself. So here we are now. We've got them all on there. We got the we got the spring off the points. We got the wire off the coil. We got the wire off the condenser. So it's all on there. So now what we got to do is we are going to put the one that holds the breaker points in and start it. It's right on top, so it's easy to do. And then you say, all right, we're short of screw. No, we're not short of screw. That's our last one. And I'll show you where it goes. That's the one that holds the points in. And this one has a washer. It's a heavy washer. So when you're looking at it, wondering what that is, that's the one that holds all holds it all together. So, so there it is. I would tell you don't tighten that one. Just get it on there. And then take your final little screw. This little screw is what we adjust the points with. And that hole right there, if you see that, that's slotted. That's what lets that move. This is where we're going to get our 15 thousandths. And this is the screw that I was telling you about earlier. See when I screw when I turn it, see how it moves the points? That is what you want because what's happening there is you you have you're adjusting the the gap with that. So again, we're going to take our screw starter. And again, I will recommend this to you. If you have really, if you have anything with a distributor or anything where you got little screws down inside it, for those of you that work on computers, you need one of these. Uh, it's just handy. It's one of those tools that when you use it, the more you use it, the better it is. So we'll get that one down there. We don't want to tighten it. We just want to get it where it nearly drags and then back up. And before you start trying to set them, you want to set the points to the maximum open. So if you're looking at the end of the armature, you see the lobe here and there's a lobe here. You don't, it doesn't matter which one, just pick one and open the points. So this end of the points, you got a side of the points that run against the lobe. Set that lobe right at, at the highest point. So right in the middle of that lobe, is where you want to set it. And now if you see there's a gap in there. That is where we want 15 thousandths. Right now that's at about. That looks like about 25 ish. I've done this <laughs> enough to where. Where uh, I can sort of look at them and tell. So what we need is less than that. So I'm going to take my screwdriver. See it. If you looked at it. If you can see it. I don't know if you can see it on there. But that's closed up. So we'll just open it up. till we get about 15 thousandths. And then take it and close and tighten our screw. And this, all this screw does here is keep that from moving. So when you get it tight, make sure you still got your gap. And we do. And on these, you can turn them backwards because you got an impulse coupling on one side that latches it up. But you want to take it. So this one is opening and closing. I think what I'm going to do is open that just a little more. Because what happens is, as these things run, the end of your points actually wears off. So if you get one sometime and you you don't have a lot of finger there, you just need to go ahead and get a set of points because um, that you've used up the you've used up the wear portion of it. So what I'm doing is just readjusting that with the screw to get a little bit more of a a gap on it. Just a little bit wider so I have a good 15. Because what the gap does is that lets the coil saturate with electricity. And if it if everything is like it's supposed to be, that 15 thousandths opening and closing is enough to make it work. So now at this point, we're going to see if we did any good. The way you test these, the way I test them, is this particular one is uh, you just put it in your, your trust device, take one of your wires, plug it in, make sure it's in there good. You got to get it seated 
I always twist mine a little, just make sure it's got, get yourself a spark plug. Put this somewhere where it grounds. Now, if you hold this, <laughs> you won't like it. But what you can do, if everything's clean, you can do it like that because you're making a you're making a connection through the vise. The safest way is just to, this has been painted, so we're I'm gonna scrape us off a clean place here. And if we've done it right and everything's good, see we just took the paint off. If it's right and we've done it well and got everything back within tolerance, you can hold this down. Now, when you're doing this, make sure that your connecting points are not against that because if this is against that, it'll just ground. Ground the spark plug. Let's see if I can get this where we can see it. Watch right here. We may have to turn the light out. We'll see if it works, but we'll, we'll turn it up where Rick can see it too. And... There you go, lightning in a box. And uh, that's a good one. If they're blue and they're fat, you have done well. Everything is well within spec. And uh, all you got to do now is put the the uh, distributor cover back on, plug your two wires in. And for those of you that run John Deere, don't get really upset about which wire goes in what hole. And I got to plug this in the left hand. Just plug them in there. Roll your... Uh, Tractor over, if it backfires, switch the wires. You got a 50-50 shot, either way. And it, uh, but that's it. It's not hard. Don't be intimidated by them. Like I said, there's five pieces in them. You got your armature, points, condenser, coil, and the iron core that goes through. That is all that's in it. It's basically that. They'll be in there different places, but they're all in there. And if you'll just take it apart, and pay attention when you're taking it apart. You'll see what I'm telling you. That they're all basically the same. And uh, they all work the same. They just did it a little bit different. To get around everybody's patent laws. And that's all you got. But that's it. That's that's the way it works. And if there's a problem with it. Or you you know you don't understand it. Find me. I'm on. Uh, <laughs> I'm in the phone book. I'm, I'm around. You can ask anybody. Ask Rick if you know Rick. I can help you. Call me. I've uh, I've talked people through Magneto rebuilds on the phone, and uh, none of them are hard. Some of them are just a little more involved. Anything else? Have I missed it? If you enjoyed this video, yeah, subscribe to our channel and like it. Like. Follow, follow us on social media and come to our shows. If, if we have a show in September and March. Yep. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Mm -hmm.